Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment where we unbundle the day's newspapers. And we have joining us this morning, a legal practitioner, Mr. Tunde Kolawole. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me, my sister. All right. Morning, sir. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper. And the headline here says, Differential Wage. Labour moves against National Assembly, holds nationwide protest today. NLC, TUC, to occupy National Assembly. State chapters join protest. CSOs endorse minimum wage bill, says Nigeria needs restructuring. Insecurity, unstable forex affecting investments in Nigeria, and that's according to the Netherlands. Senate demands detailed report on alleged 4 trillion naira unremitted funds. Lagos leads vaccine allocation with 507,000 doses. FCT gets 219,800 doses and Katsina 160,000 doses. Delta kicks as UK plans return of 2.2 billion naira looted by Ibori's family. And also on the Punch newspaper, Mainas 2.1 billion Naira fraud. AGF, Magu, eight others summoned to testify. Ugun community writes Abiodo accuses herdsmen of killing hunters. And there's a very gruesome picture here of one of the victims on the front page of the Punch. FG replaces emergency travel certificate with temporary passport. Another juicy story is here, Canada-based pastor Petitions IG, CP over threats to life and property. Akira Delu suspends NURTW as one killed in cash. An ex Dangote GM, others jailed for $32,000 insurance fraud. fraud. And here we also see pictures of that uh, differential wage uh, strike was seen here on the front page of the punch. It says members of Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria during a protest over the non-implementation of financial autonomy law for state houses of assembly in Abuja. Mr. Tunde Kolawale, these are the stories we have here on the front page of the punch. And so many of them are quite interesting. Where would you like to start? Well, um... Honestly speaking, just like we said, uh, we have a portfolio of uh, highly interesting stories on the front page of all the papers uh, this morning. And it is not surprising, it could be said that uh, we in Nigeria and uh, all over the world, we are living in these at very, very strange times. I would want to start with the um, differential wage um, the proposals by the federal, by the national legislator. First and foremost, I would like to point out that uh, when you look at uh, the constitution, labor is on the exclusive legislative list. Everything that has to do with labor has to be handled uh, on the exclusive legislative list that is by the federal uh, uh, government. So if you say that you now want to uh, begin to pay differential wage structures in the different states of the federation, you might require to think up with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, such that uh, labor issues will no longer be just on the school legislative list. It will be on concurrent um, uh, constitutional list, such that both the federal legislature and the state's House of Assembly can begin to make laws regulating the property, especially areas that have to do with wages. If you ask me about my opinion, whether it is the pathway to go, I would say this may sound unpopular uh, before my fellow comrades and the labor people, uh, I want to agree that uh, we need to begin to pay differential wages in the different states of the federation, in the different uh, areas of the economy. So uh, whoever works within the 
civil service, whether at the state level or at the federal level, simply because the revenue available to the respective states, the revenue that they generate, both as internally generated revenue and the one that they get from the federal allocations are not the same. Take, for example, the state. Take, for example, Kwara State and compare with Bayesa State, compare with River State. Bayesa is just about eight local government and uh, less than two million or two million population. And more or get more money than a Kiki State. Yet, a worker in Bayesa State is going to repay the same salary just like the one in the Kiki State. Mm -hmm. I am not too sure that is a piece, I mean, uh, sustainable. Okay. Especially given the final state of the Nigerian economy today. So we might need to uh, begin to pay differential wages. The cost of living in Lagos is also not the same thing as the cost of living in a place like Estokoto, for example, or in a place like Medukuri. The cost of living in Abuja is not the same thing as living in Lokoja, for example, in Kogi State. It is because of these reasons. And uh, more importantly, too, if you say you are practicing true federalism, then you must pay practice that true federalism in the real sense of it, in all areas of the economy, all right. in all areas all right, Mr. of Kolawale, um, in the, all areas of politics. Mr. Kolewale, let's quickly turn to another uh, story on the on the punch. And this one regarding the Iburi loots is quite a matter of controversy right now because the federal government is expected to receive uh, funds and uh, it's 2.2 billion naira in, in Nigeria from the UK. But uh, it says it's going to use the money to uh, fund infrastructure projects like the Niger Bridge, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Kaduna Abuja uh, Expressway as well. But the Alta State is saying this is the height of wickedness. They're insisting that the money belongs to Delta State and the government should give the money to them. Where do you stand on this matter? Well, for me, uh, that might be doing injustice to the people of uh, Bayesa State. Delta. In the sense that uh, we know that the bulk of the money that uh, James de Bori stole came directly from uh, Bayesa State. Delta, you Delta mean State, sir. This is this Bayesa State. Delta State, uh, Delta. sir, not Bayelsa. It's Delta State, not Bayelsa. I mean Delta State, sorry about it. Delta State. So if the bulk of the money came from, uh, from uh, Delta State, I don't see why the federal government will now say that they want to use the money to finance a proctor. But if, based on the investigation that they conducted, it is seen, and especially before the internal investigation that was done by the EFCC, if it is seen that a portion of that money came from the federal government, then the federal government might be right to say, look, this is the investigation we conducted. This percentage of the money came from the federal government. This percentage came from the uh, data state uh, people. If that is the case, then of course, uh, the federal government can take that portion that is directly traceable to the federal government and then give the portion that is directly taken from the data state uh, government back to the data state. But for you to say that we just appropriate the money and use it to finance infrastructure, that will amount to a high and very monumental industry to the people of uh, Delta. Uh, Delta State. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the nation newspapers, uh, see what we can also find there. The James Ibori story is also uh, on the, the big one there. It says the federal government and Delta battle over 4.2 million pounds linked to Ibori and uh, others. Also, uh, this morning, well, it, it, continuation of the story, it says uh, UK to return loot cash for completion of Lagos Ibadan Road and Second Niger Bridge. Also, uh, Khan knocks Quara governor over hijab policy. Labour to protest in House of Assembly. 
and also service chiefs moved to Katsina to flush out bandits. Malami Falana Mago others to testify in Mena's case. Um, of course, uh, we spoke about violence um, as uh, Akere Dulu bans NURTW activities. After violence, it was reported that one person was killed on the punch. Uh, Benin to understudy CBN's Anchor Borrowers Program. I'm not sure if that is Benin or Bene they're referring to now, but Lagos, FCT, Bauchi, Kaduna top in vaccine allocation. All right, I, I would like us to start with, uh, of course, the vaccine allocation um, once again. Uh, do you think it has been uh, properly um, shared among these uh, states? No, I, I, I wouldn't want to think so, uh, in the sense that uh, what you don't produce, can you adequately or properly share or allocate it? As far as this uh, person is concerned, we are a beggar. Uh, furthermore, uh, the resources are also not there to procure as much as we require to really be able to vaccinate our people. We are talking about a population of about 200 million. And look at uh, the amount of vaccine that is uh, coming in here. The basic truth is that uh, before they even do the allocation, the politicians will first and foremost begin to vaccinate themselves. Just like we have seen, the president has vaccinated himself, the vice president has vaccinated himself. Somebody like Atiku has run to Dubai to do his own personal fascination. In a decent environment, the politician should be the last person to fascinate themselves. But here you can be sure that the bulk of the fascination that we have now will go to service the political class, the people in the sector of government, the people in the National Assembly, the people in the judiciary, and I think that is not proper. Furthermore, the population of the respective states are not the same. Their degree of exposure to COVID-19 is also not the same. Lagos State probably has the biggest exposure risk, followed by maybe Abuja, and maybe a state like uh, uh, rivers and cross rivers and water. If you are going to be doing proper allocation, no, before I read that, furthermore, you also know that the health workers are also on the high risk, followed by those who go out on a daily basis to do many jobs like petty traders and what have you, the downfall drivers and then uh, some of these other transport uh, vehicle uh, owners and proprietors and all that. So if you are going to be doing a rational distribution of this pattern, the public should look at the exposure risk or risk for the respective states, not just in terms of population, but also in terms of uh, maybe uh, the professionals that are mostly going to be at the receiving end of this, uh, that have been at the receiving end of this uh, right. uh, COVID-19. If uh, you use that as a parameter, you probably will be able to arrive at a more rational allocation of right. the we, we would, uh, hope that, that has the... been given to us. We would hope that the Presidential Task Force and the NCDC um, understands exactly these parameters and, you know, they know, you know, what exactly to do. Um, quickly also speak, before we move to another paper, if we have time, quickly also speak about the um, NURTW, which has every other month or every other quarter, um, there's always a news story about clashes, violence, fighting. Um, yesterday, of course, they're, they're talking about one person dead. It's on the punch this morning. Um, what do, do you think about governors and states and their, you know, their ability to handle um, the NURTW and w how it seems to be above the law um, every now and then? Well, let me quickly say this, that uh, long before now, I have uh, raised the alarm that too many times we talk about a rural banditry while we forgot uh, what I would describe as urban banditry. Why the Fulani people are carrying out what we could describe as rural banditry, you find out that the area boys, the National Union of Road Transport Workers, 
and some of these military groups that the different political parties and politicians have formed engage in urban banditry, killings and mayhem all the time. I could recollect that when the Alaji Lamidia the people, the so-called stockman of the Bata politics was still alive. He used to be the commander in chief of the NURC in New York State. I also remember that there in Lagos, in those days, especially during the Second Republic, we had one at the Bay of Success, who was based in Mushin. He also used to be the commander in chief of uh, the National Union of Road Transport Worker. From the inception, from their history, we have never had any good story to tell about the National Union of Road Transport Workers. Most times, the politicians, the political class, have always used them for one dirty job or the other. And uh, just like, uh, like I said, when Lamida Debu was alive, somebody gave us the impression that um, once uh, Alaji Lamidia Debu and Co passed this on, the kind of behavior that we begin to that we have been seeing with the NURT will be a thing of the past. And I said no. The culture of violence has already taken root in most of these places, and the politicians are promoting it. They are financing it because their belief is that uh, without the NURT, they cannot win a free and fair elections. And so they finance these people, they arm them, and they deploy them to carry out all manners of atrocities against their political opponent, against the Nigerian people, against the electorate, simply to win elections. No one is against having a transport union. But the way a minor transport union are organized here in Nigeria today is not the way to go about it. Okay. Because All right, apart from the no issues you mentioned, you will recollect when some loose campaign was being launched at the Okuoba, I mean at the Agege National Stadium there. You saw the gun battle that took place between different factions of the National Union of Road Transport Workers. Up to now, no property has been brought to account mm. for Mr. that million. Mr. Mr. Connolly, Even when um, one of your own journalists was shot in that uh, encounter. All right, Mr. Kolawale, let's turn to the Guardian newspaper now. Most of the stories here we've seen on other newspapers. Uh, uh, let's talk about this one. We saw it on the punch, but it's about the NNPC. So the NNPC and the Auditor General of the Federation are locking horns over an alleged unremitted 4 trillion naira to the federal government coffers. And it reads, NNPC empowered to make deductions for operational purposes, Kiari tells reps. So, um, Mele Kerry was invited to, you know, defend the alleged, uh, you know, four trillion naira that was unremitted. And the, the NNPC is insisting that its act empowers it to remit only its revenue and that the four trillion naira it failed to remit was used to fund operational costs. But the AGF is saying that that's, that's a court against the Constitution of Nigeria. Really, does the NNPC have any legal uh, backing for its action to you know, fail to remit the four trillion naira and save it's for operational costs? Absolutely not. That is not right. That uh, they don't have any consumer backing for that at all. Why do I say this? You will recollect, and many people may not realize it, that uh, Ade Oshun, the former Minister of Finance, lost a job the very first day she said that the NMPC had not been remitting most of the money that it has been making into the national covers. And uh, because certain person in the presidency saw that as an affront of Mr. President, who is the de facto Minister of Petroleum Resources, they went and the dirty skeleton that they had about at the ocean in terms of uh, not participating or forging an NYC certificate, they leaked it to the press and also financed the press to begin to happen until Adi Oshun was oh, forced to him. flee the country to and all that. So this issue of non-remittance 
It's not a new thing. It is a thing that the NMPC has been doing for a long time. In fact, it is this kind of slush money from the NMPC that uh, most times the executive arms of government, the politicians, have always been using not just to finance their political activities, okay. uh, but Kola, also to enrich themselves. Yeah, we, so we, we, every we, money we, that we the NMPC here, makes sir. is supposed to go into the national covers. The NNPC is not empowered. All right. Um, we would have to um, end, of course, uh, off the press at this point. Um, we, of course, uh, look forward to having more conversations with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Tunde Kolawali. Thank you. Um, and good morning Thanks once again. Absolutely. Have a great you day. have a lovely day. You All too. right. Yeah. Short yeah. break. Yes, short break. And that time travel promised you.